Hello everybody and welcome back to Broken Brand. I'm your host Stuart and I'm here to give my review of the portable door. Uh, some of you that have seen my videos before know that one of my first videos was the announcement that this video is being made. Um, I'm a huge fan of Tom Holt's work. The Portable Door is the first book in his J.W. Wells series and it's fantastic. All of the books in that series are fantastic. And the person who introduced me to Tom Holt's books what is my best friend. And I have to say that when I first saw it, I was intrigued by one of the books that he had in the J.W. Wells series. And it's called, You Don't Have to Be Evil to Work Here, But It Helps. And I thought that was probably one of the funniest titles for a book I've ever seen in my entire life. And I was like, dude, can I borrow that book? And he's like, sure, but it's not the first in the series. I'm like, there's a series? All right, let's do this. So I read The Portable Door, and I went through the entire seven-book series of this. And this is basically what I would call Harry Potter for grown-ups. And some people are like, well, it's young adult. No, it's really kind of for grown-ups. It, yeah, it kind of plays into that like early 20s crowd. That's where the main characters kind of, the main protagonists kind of fall into. And it's one of those just, it's bizarre and magical and mystical. And it's going to be one of those series as a movie. I hope there's more. But as the books, I mean, a lot of fantasy people will absolutely love it. Like, I do think Harry Potter fans would absolutely love the books. But today, we're not here to talk about the books. Um, even though I've started rereading them, I'm about two-thirds of the way through Portable Door right now. I'm going to strictly stick to this movie. I'm going to pepper in some stuff in my thoughts from the books. But we'll, we'll try to stick mainly to the movie. So... This was an MGM Plus movie. What does that mean? MGM started their own series. Why did MGM start their own streaming service? I don't know. I really don't know. Amazon owns MGM's catalog. And I'm sure there's some weird copyright stuff that prevents it from being an Amazon exclusive. Which would have done so much better for this movie. As in watch, watch time and revenue. Uh, when I looked it up right before this video, I think it's cracked about 800,000, which is kind of sad, which makes me think that there's probably not going to be a second. That's sad on a lot of things because I'm a huge fan of the books. And two, I mean, you have Sam Neill and Christoph Waltz. I mean, Sam Neill, I haven't seen a movie with him in it that I did not like. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. He's, I said that incorrectly. I love Sam Neill. Every movie he's been in, I've loved. From Jurassic Park to Event Horizon, Christoph Waltz is a phenomenal actor. I mean, seriously. He can play any part. Like, if you put him in a movie, you better believe I'm going to be in that theater to watch him. He's a phenomenal actor. And here in the image, you see the two, you see Kristoff and you see Sam. And the two others are the main protagonists of this book. And I believe the first three books, the, the protagonists shift uh, throughout the series after that. But when I started rereading it, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do some thinking on this one before I really kind of dive into this movie. But I thought, okay, we'll just take that movie at face value. I'll have to buy an MGM Plus search streaming service for a month to watch this movie. I'll get around to it. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved it. But the thought of me subscribing to another streaming service and me forgetting that I've subscribed to it and about eight months later realize I've been paying for the service and never watched anything on it kind of frustrated me. So this kind of got put off in the back of my mind. Until I was watching something on Amazon Prime. And it was probably Reacher. And 
after it ended, it's like, we think you might like a portable door. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. It's on Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Prime right now. I watched it again before making this video today. It's on there right now. You can go watch it on Amazon Prime. When I first saw this, I texted my best friend. I said, portable doors on Prime. He texted me back. Quit lying. Search for it. Text me back. I'll talk to you in two hours. Absolutely. So we both watched it. And my initial reaction was like, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's not a great movie, but it's a good movie. I don't think it probably would have done well at the box office. Uh, because it's got a lot of things that it has to explain. Because it's, it's magic in the real world. And you have to combine those two and explain how they interact well. Unlike Harry Potter, like the magic world was separate to itself. And separate from normal society. This is integrated. And it's very interesting. And, it, and it's just immersive. The books are just phenomenal. But when I started rereading the books, I was like, okay, I've got some issues. Because I needed to reread what was good about the books and kind of put them in perspective. And I was talking with my best friend. I was like, after that first watch, I was like, I don't know who I'd recommend this movie to. He's like, I feel the same. Like, me and him are the only Tom Holt fans we know. I don't know anybody that's a Tom Holt fan, has read any of his fiction, which is phenomenal. All of it, his historical fiction, is hilarious. But I was like, ah, it's kind of hard. So I decided, mm, I'm going to read it. I'm going to watch it one more time. And we'll see what happens. And guess what? I enjoyed it more the second time. I really did. I was like, okay, this is better than my initial viewing. I'm seeing it again. I'm seeing... There's so much detail in the background. If you've read the books, you start to see these little things, these little hints. Uh, the pub that the two protagonists go to is called The Sword and the Stone. Why is that significant? Because in the first... In the portable door, there's a book where... In the book, there's a part where he literally wakes up one morning in his flat... And the literal Lord in the sword in the stone is in his flat. Okay. And it's not like, oh, it's kind of like the stone. No, like it's really like a sword and a boulder. It takes up his whole flat. Like he literally has to like maneuver himself out of the flat by barely squeezing through the door. It's funny. And that, that storyline is just a hoot. But I knew that something like that's not going to make it into a movie. It's going to be fun. But you can't really spend too much time on that when you've got two hours or less to make a movie and tell a story of a book. So, I think they did a good job. And, like I said, on that first watching, I was like, I don't know who I'd recommend this to. And I watched it again. And I'll be honest, I think it was better the second time I watched it. Because I went in watching it with my knowledge of the book. And started comparing in my mind. And that's never how you should ever approach a movie that's been adapted from a book. So this time I watched it as this is the movie. And it turns out it was pretty good. Like I said, not great, but good. I do have one problem that... And that's the casting of... Of Sophie and Carpenter, and it's that they're too pretty. They are like if you read the books, it's kind of like oh, you know, like this is kind of, and they kind of get close. No, 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 no. Like if I was put put on put in charge of casting for this movie, my pick for these two leading roles for Carpenter and Sophie would have been DJ Qualls and Lauren Lapkus. Everyone knows kind of DJ Qualls. He's that real nerdy, lanky guy and new guy, hustle and flow. Lauren Lapkus was Stewart's girlfriend on The Big Bang Theory. I would take those two in casting 
and then make them do the Christian Bale machinist diet, then they would look like how they were described in the book. <laughs> if you've seen the machinist with Christian Bale, you know what I'm talking about. Like, they were just... I mean, Tom Holt did not have a kind word to say about either one appear either one's appearance. And no, I'm not trying to say that just in case someone's wondering, I'm upset that they race swapped Sophie. Nope, not a problem at all. My problem is she's too pretty for the part. <laughs> That's the problem. They both were just like, oh, by the description, like, oh, these must be the two ugliest people in, in London. Like, seriously. And so you're like, oh, wow, of course they get together. Please don't have babies. We don't want you to have babies. Y'all two are ugly. I'm just joking. But... It's, it, I mean, that's how they're described. And with this new mystical story and this new mystical world that's about, it's really good in explaining quickly kind of how everything's, everything works in this universe. But there's so much more that you kind of piece together. Like, on the first viewing, I was like, I know all this. And with the second viewing, I sat through and was like, Okay, if I just ignore the book and focus on this, what am I getting? What am I seeing that is good about this movie? And honestly, there's so many questions that don't get answered. Like they get alluded to and just like, okay, how is this person doing this? How do they have this ability? Where did these abilities come from? They're separate from humans, but they're not, but they're also humans. And then we've got the goblins that are everywhere. And it's really, there's so much information that not all of it gets answered to a satisfying conclusion in this movie. So that's why I still kind of hesitate to recommend this movie to a lot of people. If you are a huge fantasy fan, if you like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, just anything that dives deep into weird and alternating fantasies. This is a good movie for you. You'll enjoy it. You won't be like, this is my favorite movie. You'll be like, I enjoyed that. That was good. You may watch it again. I'm probably going to watch it a few more times. Uh, I'm debating whether I want to purchase a physical copy of it. I might just because... I hope some of that money goes back to Tom Holt and he starts writing more books. So I'm kind of in that camp. But this is a good movie, not a great movie. I do think Harry Potter fans would absolutely lose their minds if they read the books. And I do hope that the fact that this thing, I think, made about $800,000 over, but it made $800,000 for a streaming only release they attribute it, they attribute $800,000 to it and ironically the biggest market that bought into this movie was not Australia where it was filmed and produced or London or Eng London England where it takes place but Russia of all places found that interesting um, I guess Tom Holt's got a lot of fans in Russia so as a Tom Holt fan I do love this movie and I really do think it's good. I just don't think it's good enough. I feel like this will be the only Tom Holt adaptation we're ever going to get. It never got a theater release. It was streaming only on MGM. It's gone to Amazon and other platforms in different countries like Stan and a couple others. But honestly, it's worth a watch. I do think some people will enjoy this. I think the fantasy fans will enjoy it. I think the magical fans will enjoy it. I do think most of the normies, like, I'm not calling up my brother to watch this. Uh, my brother's a big normie. My parents are semi-normie. Uh, my dad's a normie. My mom's not. But, I mean, my mom would enjoy it. My brother wouldn't. My dad wouldn't. They'd be like, oh, that's kind of dumb, kind of stupid. they kind of lose interest about halfway through the movie. Even there's so much information, so much stuff in the background that they put that you're like, you start piecing it together. On a second watch, you see a lot more information and 
explanation of some of the stuff in the background, inform just background images and advertisements kind of hint at to what some some of these things are and some of these who some of these people are. And I do think it's a good movie, not great. I do hope that somehow, somewhere, we get a second one. And I hope if we do, it gets an Amazon Amazon Prime release that will bolster up the possibility for a third. But everything's kind of silent. I haven't really heard anything about this. This came out of April 2023. And I'm a big fan to say that if it's been quiet for almost a year now, that we probably won't see the second installment. But it doesn't mean this movie isn't worth a watch. So if you got some time chilling at your house, laying on the couch, pull up Prime, watch The Portable Door, it'll at least entertain you for an hour and a half. So until next time, I love you all. And there's nothing you can do about it.